Hello, I'm Laura Newman. I'm an affiliate for Spellbinders Fun Stampers Journey. I'm um, a, a big time crafter, but largely a paper crafter. I've been stamping, um, creating scrapbook pages, making cards for, oh gosh, well over 20 years. I, I hate to say how long, actually, because I'll date myself, but I'll give you a hint. I have nine grandchildren, so anyway, um, today I'm sharing a technique that I haven't done in quite a while. It's called Joseph's Coat. I'm going to show you the card I'll be demonstrating today. Isn't that beautiful? I'm going to turn it a little so you can see all the shimmer and shine on it. Can you believe that when I started this card, here's the back panel, the background piece that's black with all the multicolored stars. Yes, white cardstock. This is Fun Stamper's Journey Whipped Cream. I want to tell you right now, you're going to cut two of these at four inches by five and a quarter, two panels, and then you're going to cut a piece that's one and a half inches by two and a half inches all in whipped cream and then the card base I cut mine lengthwise this time but this is just going to be a regular A2 card base so the whole card will measure four and a quarter by five and a half inches um, to make this beautiful card today I'm going to be sharing with you uh, a new release it just came out this weekend called Dream Seeker they have a stamp set it got 19 stamps in it. Had to look at the number there. But just beautiful. You've got all kinds of space images. So you've got a planet. You've got one that looks like Saturn, a ring planet. You've got a couple of whales. You've got a couple of swans. I mean, you could use this for love cards, wedding cards, swans on Valentine cards, anniversary cards. Um, the space scenes. Um, I turned mine into an inspiration card today. You could also use this for a graduation. Um, birthday card. Just change your sentiments out. Any number of possibilities. So I really love how versatile this set is. There's also, as an extra purchase, a set of matching dies available. And when you head over to my blog, laurascraftycreations.com, you can find all the links to everything you're going to need to make this card today. Just beautiful, but you get five little dies. Let me show those to you. So today we're going to be using the planet die. Basically, when I stamp an image, I'll just put that down on it. I used uh, low-tech tape, in this case painter's tape. You could also use washi tape just to hold it on to your cardstock before you run it through the die cutting machine. But these are excellent quality spring steel dies. So I want now that I'm done sharing those, let's go ahead and get started. Yes, there's going to be a stencil today. I like to get inky, messy, play with ink a lot. So I'm going to put down my first panel of whipped cream cardstock. And right, we're going to be using a create a palette pad today. You can also get this from Fun Stampers Journey. Um, I'll put out all the links and, and addresses to get to all my social media at the end of this video. But this is the Create a Palette Pad from Fun Stampers Journey. You get five little uninked sections. You can put any color you want in. So here I've gone ahead and added the Watermelon Fusion twice. Because this one I wanted to be like a rainbow effect. The Lemon Drop Reinker and the Beach Breeze Reinker. So, to make my, for um, the little pieces that I'm going to cut, like the, uh, I have one of the planets done here. I also have our star. So, today I'll be cutting out the moon, or not the moon, the world shaped planet. So, the one that looks kind of like Earth, not really, but. So we're going to go direct to paper. You're going to place this ink pad down on your cardstock, and you're going to drag it, and you're going to apply some pressure. It didn't cover all the way. You'll want to do this a couple of times. 
I'm going to move it over just slightly to get those colors to mix and blend. And this is one thing I really love about the Fun Stampers Journey Fusion Ink Pads. They blend so easily. Now you can see that I've got shades of green, of orange, of purple going on in here. Absolutely beautiful. So this is just going to be an extra piece that we're going to cut our dies out of. Let's see, I think I'll go this way this time. And we'll just flip that pad and get a little more color. So it's going to take you three or four passes. And there. So now we have our little background piece done. And I really don't care if there's a few streaks or blotchiness in here. Um, this is going to come out so cool looking. I'm going to wave it a little bit to let that dry. Help it to dry a bit because we went pretty heavy with the ink. And we're going to need a heat gun here. I'm just going to dry it real quickly. It's very rainy and damp here today. So things don't want to dry as fast as they normally would. But I'm not complaining about the rain. It beats snow. A lot of you may know I'm in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. And yeah, we had a lot of snow this year. So a little rain doesn't hurt good for the garden, that type of thing. So I'm just quickly going in here and giving it a little hit with the heat gun just to get it dry. And I see a lot seep through on the back, so I'm just going to focus on those spots in particular. Okay, and the card is starting to curl, so it is dry. So I'm just going to um, gently, gently bend the card a little flatter, make it a little easier to work with. Now this is going to be really, really super bright. I'm going to show you a way to lighten it up a little bit, soften it, and brighten it. We're going to take the whipped cream ink pad. This is pure pigment. Um, the other one we used, these are all fusion reinkers. It's kind of a cross between pigment and dye ink. So it will dry on its own. If you go really heavy with it on a damp day like today, you might have to heat set it a bit. So I'm going to take one of our fusion sponges. Here's a fusion sponge. It comes as a circle. All you're going to do is cut it in half like I've already done to this one. This is my last one or I'd show you the full circle. You're going to cut that little piece off. So you can get six to eight pieces out of them, depending how big of a sponge you like. So I'm going to pick up some whipped cream ink on there. And I'm going to start very lightly, just going in little circles. And can you see that color starting to soften and lighten? I push a little harder when I want a little more ink down. And you can see already how much lighter and brighter that's going to get. I don't want to have this be too overwhelming for our little pieces that we're going to pop out on top of the card. And we'll just do a little more over here. Now, this is a pigment ink. It will need to be heat set. Unless you want to leave it out to dry for, oh, well over 24 hours. Which we don't want to do here. So for the sake of the video, I'm going to go ahead and hit heat set that again really quick just to get that pigment ink to dry. This is a really nice heat gun that Fun Stampers Journey sells. Um, I heard of Fun Stampers Journey about four years ago. I started buying some of their products. I absolutely love the quality of the products. The ink pads are awesome. The rubber stamps, I'm going to show you here why I'm drawing. You can see that is deeply etched red rubber. The stamp quality on these is wonderful.
Okay, I think we're good to go. I'm going to take an acrylic block, also from Fun Stamper's Journey. They come in different sizes. You can see this is really thick, a really well-weighted block. Very, very easy to work with. Then we're going to take our black link licorice ink. We're going to go ahead and ink the stamp up. Ooh, what colors do I want? Where am I going to place it? I think I want some purple in my planet. So, oh, let's try multicolored. Let's go right here. And there we are. You can see what a nice, crisp image we've got. So I'm just going to take the excess black ink off before I clean it. We've got, for our inks, uh, the Fun Stampers Journey inks, you will need to pick up some of the True Color Fusion Cleaner to really get the stamps clean. Because, again, um, this is kind of a cross between or a blend of fusion of a pigment ink and a dye ink. There, you can see how nice and clean that stamp came out now. If you don't pick up the ink cleaner, you're going to notice, especially with the black ink and some of the darker colors, that your stamp will become very, very stained. It will not really affect the quality of the stamp images it produces, but I don't know. I just like to use the cleaner. So we've got the planet done. I'm going to pull that off. We're going to need... Our little uh, ringed planet now. And I want that to have more purple in it than anything. So I think I'm going to stamp that right here. And again, I'll clean it. Yeah, you, I just use um, a little painting pad. I spray a little bit of the cleaner on. It will last quite a while. So you don't need to uh, re-wet it or uh, apply more for you know, over a good hour, hour and a half. So there's our planet. And last but not least, our star. And this one I would like a little orange in. So we're going to go right there. And I was kind of messy inking up my stamp. I've got some little lines, but we're going to have to fussy cut that. So you really won't notice that in the end anyway. Now I'm trying to line up my next stamp I'm going to use. So I'm thinking right about there looks good. These blocks are nice. You can see through them. They have little grid lines. So when you are working with the words, it's easy to line those up so that you get a straight image. But I've already cut out Saturn. Again, I would just use this little die, place it on. Hold it with the washi tape. Like so and then run it through your die cutting machine. I have a Platinum um, from Spellbinders. I also have a Platinum 6. In this case, the Platinum 6 would be more than you would need to cut out some small pieces. So we'll go ahead and pull that off because I've already got that stamped. We're gonna do a little fussy cut. No, we're not gonna fussy cut. We're gonna use a punch. Now, I think one of the circles in the Journey Circles die set would actually cut out this planet. This planet does not have a die. Um, however, I'm in the process of doing a little remodeling and rearranging in the craft room. And I simply could not find which box I put those in during the process. So I did find a punch. And what I'm using here today is a one and a half inch punch. I have no idea who made it. Let's see. Oh, it's Creative Memories Punch. Okay. Now, I like to punch upside down because I can see exactly where I want that to go. And as you can see, I'm going to have to trim my paper a little bit. 
because it's not going to line up exactly how I would like it. So I'm just going to put a little snip. Take some of that off. Not sure I should cut more of it. And then we're going to go ahead and try sliding that in again. And that's looking pretty good. I like to take an acrylic block just to apply pressure evenly on these cuts. My cardstock still might be a little wet. And there we go. I just needed to stand up and apply more pressure with my arms. And there we have our planet cut out. So put that back. I'm going to set this piece aside. So now we have our three pieces cut. The next thing we want to do is stamp on our small two and a half by one and a half inch piece of whipped cream cardstock. If you do need to fussy cut, however, before I get onto that, I wanted to show you this. These are the FSJ uh, Detail Pro Shears. These are amazing scissors. If you're one of those people that really doesn't like to fussy cut, your corners come out funny, your scissors are tearing your paper, um, it just doesn't seem to cut well, um, let me show you real quick. I'm just going to start on this one. What I like to do is just cut it out of a larger piece, make it smaller to work with. So I'm just going to show you a little bit of this, but I'm going to come in. Oh, let's get in the camera where you can see. You can see when I'm doing my corners, I'm just turning, going around. When I get to the corner, before I round it, I'm going to replace it and just come right around in one smooth cut. So there, I'll finish fussy cutting later. But you can see how beautifully and nicely these paper shears cut. Might want to take a little bit off of here. Just beautiful. They don't rip or tear. The other thing about these scissors is there's kind of a non-stick coating. So if you're somebody who's cutting through adhesive a lot or tape or you work with gunky things once in a while, um, like if you have the Wonder Tape or anything like that, you'll notice your scissors build up in here. A lot of them build up adhesive. Um, these are amazing. If it does stick a little bit, all you do is take a thumbnail and wipe off. There is no taking them to the kitchen sink and scrubbing. Um, the coating on it helps prevent the sticking. So absolutely wonderful scissors. I highly recommend them to anyone. Now we're going to go ahead and stamp our sentiment. So let me ink that up. Make sure it's coated and it looks good. And then I'm going to line it up. Can you see that okay here? I kind of have to get my eyes close to eyeball it. So if you see my head for a minute, it's just because I'm getting a little closer. Okay. So I've gone just a little bit crooked with that. So, again, I'm going to take out my shears. And I'm just going to come through and even that out. Now I'm going to cut apart the sentiments. Just 
just moving slowly along. And there's our first one, or our last one, I should say. I'm going to come along this side and even it out with the scissors. I'm going to cut this one apart on the third line now. I'm going to do a little curve cutting in here. And then we're going to trim that piece off. And that end off. And I need to straighten it a little bit. And there we go. Now my last one, almost swiped it in the garbage. We're just going to clip here. And clip there. So now, oh, and we're going to trim this off. And we're going to trim this side off. And again, I may want to take just a little more off the bottom here. And there we go. So our three sentiments are ready to go. Those are ready to go. Now I'm going to move them up and out of the way for now. And Clean off my paper. And now I'm going to get into the Joseph's coat technique, which again involves our Create a Palette. Take that back out, the same one I just used. Um, also, my Starbright stencil, a brand new release from FSJ. This is a six by six inch stencil, it's absolutely amazing. Um, I'm going to figure out by placing this over where I want my star pattern to go. And I'm thinking I'm going to go this way. Kind of like that. And I want diagonal lines this time from about here to about there. Let me set that aside for now. So we're going to go ahead... Let me start on this end, maybe. Well, so again, using good pressure, just drag that through. I'm going to have to do a second swipe. And it doesn't matter if you don't line it up exactly correctly. because I think that should be enough. It's it's cool. It's outer space. We're going to cover up any blemishes, that kind of thing. And then I want to check with my stencil again. Do I need to go further? And you know, I think I need a little more of the watermelon fusion on this side. Let's check with our stencil again. And yep, I think that would do it. So it's going to get all these nice little detail stars in here everywhere else. So I'm going to go ahead and heat set this a bit because we're going to emboss. So when you're embossing, you want to make sure your surface is really dry so that when you put down your pigment embossing ink, um, it will only stick to where you stamped and not on any other wet parts of the card. So, very, very important. I would actually recommend, if you have time, creating this piece oh, the night before you want, you're going to actually work on the card. Do this one ahead. Let it set overnight to dry. Um, the quick way, again, is to heat set it with a heat gun. And it's really kind of a bit on the damp side in my house today because of all the rainy weather we've got. So 
So you can notice that ink drying when I'm hitting it with the gun. It's just lightening right up on there. Which is why I like to do the back side too. And I have a couple of little really damp spots, yep. You'll notice that the uh, fusion ink colors lighten a little bit as they dry. It's not so, it's still bright, it's beautiful. It's just not as deeply intense, but gorgeous, gorgeous colors. And that should do us. So I'm gonna again work the cardstock a little. Very gently. I don't want to crease or bend it. I'm just sort of gently forcing those fibers back into place so the card will lay flat. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now we are going to go ahead and place our stencil on. And I'm just going to line it up where I want those stars to show. And I'm liking that. So I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to grab some low tack tape to hold that in place. Put one there. We'll put one up here. Do one there. Well, that piece isn't sticking at all. Put one there. And let's try bigger pieces of tape. Okay, so now I've got it secure. Nope. Again, it's really damp in my house today, so normally I don't have an issue with this tape sticking. Now we're going to take our clear pigment reinker. Go ahead and open that. And I'm going to go ahead and push down. This is kind of a spongy pad because it is pure pigment. So I'm just pushing down and into the cardstock as I go. Making sure to hold on to it because, yeah, my tape is really having an issue with the sticking today. What this is going to do, um, it's going to create, when we get done embossing it, 
the beautiful clear embossed surface on the colors. And when we add the embossing powder, it will uh, not absorb any other ink. So when we coat it to get that black background, these will actually resist the black ink. Okay, I think I've got that good and coated. And now, can you see that where I've embossed with the clear ink? When I emboss, I always, always use the clear pigment ink. I know some people like to do it with Versamark, but I don't know. I, I find, at least for myself, that the Versamark tends to seep into my cardstock too quickly and doesn't hold the embossing powder all that well. So I stick with what I know and like, so that's what I do. Now I'm going to use the uh, Journey Clear Embossing Powder today. I absolutely love this embossing powder. But like the name in indicates, it dries clear. It is a super fine detail, so it does a really nice job on embossing. I'm just folding up a piece of paper to work with for the embossing part, which you can't see off camera. You could use a tray or something else, but I know I like it. And then I've got my embossing buddy. I've had this, oh gosh, forever. I can't remember how many years. So I like to use this rather than a tray. I just find it's easier to um, get the embossing powder off of it that I shake off. So, and then of course I put the crease mark in so that when I'm done, I can just pick it up, tap it, and pour it right back into the jar like that. Now we're gonna pull our painter's tape off. I'm going to be careful not to in touch, my, touch my embossing ink at all. I'm going to go ahead and add my clear embossing powder on. Make sure I get it on liberally so it sticks where it should. And then I'm just going to kind of move it around make sure everything gets covered really well and give it a couple little flicks so now you can see that all my stars have that little coating um, I do have some spots that are sticking to the ink but they're kind of random I'm just going to go ahead, grab my little paintbrush here, and just kind of flick some of that off where I don't want it sticking. Again, I probably should have dried the cardstock a little more. It is damp in my house today. Being careful. Not to pull it off the stars. And uh, I probably should have hit my cardstock with the embossing buddy too. I think I forgot that step today. But so I'm going to have some little random embossing, but it's okay. It's going to be a space galaxy scene. It'll turn out amazing and beautiful anyway. So let me clean up my embossing powder mess. Just going to dump that back in. There. I like to um, cap up my powder, move my ink pads away so that I don't hit them with a the heat gun on accident. I did that once when I was a brand new stamper many, many years ago, and boy, did that clump in the jar. So, safety first, right? Don't ruin that good embossing powder. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to go ahead and heat set this. 
and I'm hoping you'll be able to see it turning clear. And there we go. Can oh, can you see that? Get this side over here. You don't want to overheat it. You'll cause it to bubble and warp. You just want to hit it until it turns clear. And you do want to make sure that it's all heat set. Oh, we missed one here. Okay. I'm just going to check that in the light. I'm going to go ahead and just brush off anything loose that I missed. There we go. I've got more embossing powder on that piece. There we go. This sheet's much better. So, let's go ahead and start the fun. We are going to take our black licorice true color fusion ink and just go direct to paper. And you're like, oh no, you're covering up all that beautiful embossing. But wait, there's a little magic. Whenever you're doing a resist technique, it's just incredible. You're like, but Laura... I can't see the stars anymore. They all turn black. That's okay. I want to make sure I get a good coating of this. I'm going to take a piece of paper towel. Lay it on. Wick out any of the excess ink that I can pull off right now. And I'm not really rubbing it because, you know, it is 80-pound cardstock, but when you put paper on paper, it will start to, like, peel, or I don't know what you call that, little tiny chunks pull up. It starts to peel, I guess. It reminds me of a sweater that gets a little peeling on it. So, that's a lot of it. Now I'm just going to gently rub off anything else I can get off. I'm not pressing hard or scrubbing it. And again, those stars are looking just a little dark, aren't they? That's okay. There's one more step. Now, again, because the Fun Stampers Journey inks are a fusion of pigment and dye ink, it tends to want to stick to the stars a little more. So here comes our stamp cleaner again. 